Every month, a peculiar migration occurs in Europe. From the European Parliament to the European Parliament. Hard to believe, but we have two European Parliaments. Every month, 5,000 people, members of the European Parliament, their staff, interpreters and groups of officials, travel from Brussels to Strasbourg to vote on EU laws. After three days of intense debates and voting, they go back to Brussels. This ritual, with two fully equipped Parliament buildings 435 kilometers apart, is unique in the world. The costs? Almost 200 million euros and 20,000 tons of carbon dioxide each year, a burden to EU taxpayers and the environment. But most importantly, during this three-day field trip, Parliament is isolated from all other key players that remain in Brussels. EU institutions, representations of member states, civil society organizations, and the media. This absurd exercise is dictated by the governments of European states, treating the European Parliament as just another agency under their control. This is fundamentally undemocratic. How did it come to this? When the predecessor of the European Parliament was created, it had no say on laws. So the few dozen unelected envoys gathered in the existing building of the Council of Europe in Strasbourg. Today, its members directly represent 500 million EU citizens, and they have a say on all EU laws and on the Union's budget. So should they not be able to decide when and how they do their work? It's time that governments treat the European Parliament as an equal partner, as a real parliament. Europe needs less bureaucracy and more democracy. Based on the initiative of German Green Gerhard Hefner, Parliament will now use its new right to propose changes to the EU treaties that will finally allow it to choose freely when and where it meets. This breakthrough is good news. Good for EU citizens, good for the environment, and above all, good for European democracy.